5 divided by y squared minus 3y minus 10 plus y divided by y squared plus y minus 2. All right, now before, ladies and gentlemen, it was pretty basic to find if I had 1 fourth plus 3 6, we already knew. Um, we already knew our LCM in this case, right? We knew the LCM is going to equal 12. That one's pretty basic, right? And even when we added a squared and a to the fifth, you could say, all right, well, the LCM is a to the fifth. It's pretty basic when you just have numbers and variables that are multiplied by each other, right? You just say, you pretty much just take what is the largest number that you multiply to get your numbers, that's part of your LCM, and what is the largest exponent, and that's, your LC, that's part of your LCM, right? So, but now we're coming to a problem where we have a trinomial and another trinomial. So we could, to find the LCM, we could say that's part of your LCM and that's part of your LCM and multiply them. Or that might re re reduce some redundancy because the LCM in this case is 12. But you could also say a common multiple would also be, um, you could look at 24. Right? If you multiply them, it would be 24. But that's not the least common multiple. We always want to use the least common multiple so you don't have to simplify at a later time. So what I'm going to do is I want to see, can I factor these out? All right. Whenever you guys see a trinomial or even a binomial, see if you can look and work on some factoring. So we look at this and we say y squared minus 3y minus 10. That, can that be factored? Of course it can. y minus 5 times y plus 2. And then we see, can we factor y squared plus y minus 2? And can that be factored? Of course, y plus 2, y minus 1. <coughs> yes? No? That's right. OK. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as y minus 5 over my new factored form, y minus 5 times y plus 2 plus y over um, y plus 2 times y minus 1. OK, so now as I go and write my LCM, so now I wrote it down and I factored each term. So now when I go and write my LCM, what does my LCM have to contain? Well, what is the common multiple between these two that they both have to contain? Now they're both going to have to, if I was like going to multiply these out, do I, need to multiple, do I need to show y plus 2 twice, or can I just show it once? Does, does y plus 2 both divide into y plus 2? Yes. So I can write my LCM is going to be y plus 2. And then what else needs to be a part of my LCM? y minus 5 and y minus 1. So there, ladies and gentlemen, my LCM is you could see, if I were to multiply both of these by each other, I would have a redundancy of y plus 2. But now when I factor them out, I notice that my LCM needs to only contain y plus 2, y minus 1, and y minus 5. So now I need to look at it and say, what do I need to multiply each term by to get it to that LCM? So over here, to get this to my LCM, I need to multiply by y minus 5, right? And I multiply that on the top and the bottom. Over here, to get it to my LCM, I need to multiply it by y minus 1. Does everybody follow me with this? OK, so now, since I'm going to multiply them, I have a binomial times a binomial. That means you're going to have FOIL. And then over here, I have a monomial times a binomial, meaning I'm going to have to apply distributive property. So I'm going to do a little work in my head. Y times y, y squared. Y times negative 5 is negative 5y. Y times negative 1 is negative 1, so that becomes a negative 6y. Negative 1 times negative 5 is a positive 5. Plus y times y is y squared minus 5y. So I just simplified. I just multiplied these out. And then I take them over my LCM, or common denominator. OK, now to get my final answer, let's just combine our like terms. So we could say y squared plus y squared is 2y squared minus 11y plus 5 over y minus 1 times y minus 5 times y plus 2. Now, 
We're not done yet. Usually you guys say, oh, this looks like we're pretty much done, right? But is this something that can be factored? Could be, right? Let's just go and check it. What two numbers could I multiply um, that would give me a negative 5 and a negative 1? And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? This actually can be factored. 2y squared minus 11y plus 5. By practicing my factoring, I could say this is 2y um, minus 1 times y minus 1. Would you guys agree with me on that? Let's check it. 2y times y is y squared. 2y times, no, I'm sorry, that's 5. I said it, but I didn't write it. 2y times y is 2y squared. 2y times negative 5 is negative 10y. y times negative 1 is negative 1y, which add up to give you negative 11y. And negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. So if you wrote it here, guys, you're very, very close. All right. However, we just need to understand, though, we can factor this one more time, which would give us um, 2y minus 1 times y minus 5 over y minus 1 times y minus 5 times y plus 2, which is important in this case because now the y minus 5s cancel out. So the final, final, final answer is going to be 2y minus 1 over y minus 1 times y plus 2. It's a long problem, has a lot of steps, but you need to make sure you can follow through and get it out of things. Does anybody have any questions on that? But that's how you would finalize that problem. OK. Good talk. No other questions on that?